if you kind of picture it, look back a bit, it does fit in line with the face. That those could be her hands grasping those pillars. It's pretty She's menacing because she has like this, you know, not as demonic face as the hands. So if you picture those together, she's got to have some pretty gnarly body going on. Mistress of Pain, maybe? Yeah, most likely all of this does correspond to the Mistress of Pain. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I don't want to believe it for the most part simply because I've never heard of the girl. And I don't think she personally would play a huge role in the the major grand scheme of things in the way, same way that uh, and Ariel didn't really play any major role other than she was the boss in Act 1. Definitely a cool environment, though. Next shot we got appears to be in the same dungeon, I would say. Trist this one, tunnels. we're very fortunate. It's labeled. Yes, I just noticed that. Victor Lee, September 2007, Tristram Tunnels. Now, I don't think this is the same area, though I do believe it is the same artist. Um, because what we're not seeing here is the... the gigantic antediluvian sort of scale of things these door this doorway the ceiling is human sized right it's pretty big but you can imagine somebody building it there's definitely a tree and mushrooms growing in there (laughs) yes there are sorry i i used the wrong word i not antediluvian cyclopsian i just had to correct myself you and your big words why is that statue girl screaming Maybe she's well, not. She's in agony. There's another crumpled one over there. What out of this picture jumps out at you? The thing that I keep coming back to, the two things are the very chipper balustrades, and the other thing that stands out to me is that brace on the tunnel. Mm-hmm. Is yeah, very that's exactly odd. it. Um, you know, it's it's a wooden brace, but at both ends of it, they stylize it to look like a head at one end and a hand at the other and so I was sitting there thinking I'm like you know what if you're going to brace up a wall why would you put that much effort into just building a board <laughs> cuz it I looks mean, that, cool that's, that's pretty much it I look at that thing and go it looks like it was specially designed to brace this pile of crap <laughs> why why is this fancy thing propping up a a line of boards that aren't even connected properly it doesn't make any sense Tristram Tunnels are a fancy place, or at least they were back in the day. They're falling apart, so you got to kind of class it up. With the new improvements that you bring in to hold things up, you know, you can't just stick a regular board there. you got to class it up a bit. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, th- those 2 by 4s sitting there look like they just walked along and ripped somebody's fence off. And not even a good job. Very strange. Hey, maybe that's where the Siege Breaker tried to get into the upper level. <laughs> <laughs> he just kind of elbowed through that wall and thought, hey, you know, I should fix this. I should do a, a schnazzy job for it, though. Now, this last bit of concept art we got coming up, this is the last piece we're going to do, and by far the most grotesque one we have come across, even with those giant dead bodies in lava. This one appears to be a dungeon of maybe some butcher-like monster, because you got bodies skewed through the back of the neck with giant spikes coming out their mouths, hanging from the walls, bodies hanging upside down with the guts ripped out. I mean, it's just brutal place. At the same time, you know, King Leoric, it's he's back, and his madness has uh, come back with him. That's true. Yeah, it is very reminiscent of a, a medieval dungeon of what would happen if you defied the law in a very, very serious manner, like traitor. Well, if you... One of the best and most impacting sort of examples that I can think of is from uh, The Fountain, when you're going through the sequences that take place in uh, in the wife's book where you've got this corrupt priest who's murdering these civilians and it's this you know, gut-wrenchingly dark and brutal and mean way of, uh, of taking care of people and when I look at this I kind of have flashbacks to, to that and my stomach starts going like oh. I didn't care much for that flick it was, a, it was an interesting watch it's not one that I would pick up and watch every day but I think it was worth a, a one time through I love it and own it and bought it on Blu-ray the day it came out Damn. 
Someone's a big fan. Nice. I, I think uh, in this picture, the thing that strikes me as the most amazing part of it as far as the detail is concerned is this uh, this very front body in the right corner that's the closest to you from perspective wise you can actually see the hair but you don't notice it at first are you talking about the concept like, art uh yeah the last yeah. piece we're looking at yeah because if you look at it the guy looks bald it looks like a shadow and then you you pay closer attention and you can actually tell he has long hair gross oh i see that yeah that's nasty <laughs> yeah see it, just little things like that to me are amazing because, like I say, I don't know about you, but I think we all miss that the first glance you give it. Definitely. Like, oh, that's a sh- Wait, no, that's not a shadow. That's hair. Ooh. <laughs> so, that's all the concept art we had planned for this week. So yeah, let's end the show. Well, thank you all for listening and enjoying the show, looking at some concept art with us. We'll get another one of these live shows up sometime. I'll let you know when, but say goodbye, gentlemen. Good night. Goodbye to the loyal eight. Ken, Mr. Quiet, uh, his microphone. Said goodbye. I didn't hear They it. said goodbye at the same time. Oh. <laughs> <I didn't hear> <laughs> <laughs> if you missed the last live show, that concept art show, that was a good one. You can catch that on YouTube. But yeah, we'll see you all next time on the World Stone Keep.